December 10th, 2021. 911, where's your emergency? The Amazon warehouse got hit. Panic 911 calls. People are trapped in the bathroom. We got hit by a tornado. From people working in this Amazon warehouse, six people who took cover in a bathroom never made it home. Austin McEwen was one of six people killed when that tornado struck the Amazon Fulfillment Center in Southern Illinois last month. At the time of his death, Austin was 26 years old. He was the son of Alice and Randy McEwen, who have come forward and filed a lawsuit on his behalf. Uh, Austin was a former high school and college hockey player. He was beloved in his community. He had a very serious girlfriend that he was ready to propose to, start a life with, have children with. Uh, obviously, Alice and Randy McEwen uh, the enjoyment of their son throughout the decades, having children, having grandchildren, seeing their grandchildren graduate from school and all of life's milestones has been taken away from them. Just a few of the questions investigators are trying to answer. Did Amazon have adequate tornado safety measures in place? And did the company follow federal regulations? So on the evening of the collapse, a structural safety specialist who also happens to be a professional engineer and structural engineer went to the actual site of the collapse mandated by the government and learned that support columns in the area where the building fell were not properly anchored, some not anchored at all to the ground. He said he was astonished when he saw that the columns were unanchored. Uh, it's a grave violation of the International Building Code, and he said he's never seen anything like it. There's no excuse uh, for support columns to not be properly anchored anywhere in the United States, anywhere in the world, but especially in Tornado Alley. We repeatedly tried to ask Amazon about what happened here and if there are now plans to add shelters in areas prone to tornadoes. The company won't talk to us and maintains the warehouse was safe and met all building codes. It is very clear that Austin was asked to come back to continue fulfilling his delivery duties. Uh, work should have been suspended that day. Uh, our investigation has revealed that Amazon, as early as the day before December 9th, 2021, had ample notice that a tornado was approaching Edwardsville, Illinois. Uh, but most importantly, we've also learned that this facility was not equipped with FEMA uh, safe rooms, FEMA designated refugee shelter areas. And if Amazon knew that it couldn't protect its employees, uh, there was nothing stopping them from telling them around noon or one o'clock that day to go home. And you really have to question if profits took precedence over safety. Jeff Bezos uh, is facing criticism for his handling of this tragedy. His, his response came almost a full 24 hours after the tornadoes lifted and as details emerged about the Edwardsville vac factory collapse on Saturday morning and afternoon, Bezos was championing his latest space tourism launch. The McEwen family and other families have expressed to us, uh, you, you have to remember, uh, th they lost very important people to them. And they're very curious why Amazon and Jeff Bezos and its founders can shoot themselves off into space but never took the time to come to Edwardsville to console these families, meet with these families, and help them understand what happened. Very early on after we filed the lawsuit, Amazon's spokesperson denied any wrongdoing, uh, denying any form of negligence, and actually indicated that people were appropriately sheltering. Alonzo Harris is one of 40 employees who survived. He's a delivery driver, and that day just returned to the warehouse in Edwardsville, Illinois, when a manager redirected him. Stop your vehicles. There is a, um, a storm coming. Seek shelter. Harris followed co-workers to Amazon's Take Shelter area. He describes it as a windowless hallway. Amazon says it was not designed to be a storm shelter. We've learned from whistleblowers inside the facility that it was extremely chaotic. People were wondering why they were not permitted to leave. Uh, people, now that a lawsuit has been filed and they've learned more about what should have been placed, have contacted our law firm and myself indicating that there was no emergency plan, they were never a part of any sort of evacuation drill, that you were told to go to work, stay at work, and work all through this storm. Before he died, Amazon worker Larry Vierden reportedly texted his girlfriend, Amazon won't let us leave. People have communicated that in the culture at Amazon, the moment you step what Amazon would consider out of line, go slightly against an Amazon policy, speak up, ask for an extra break if it's a day that someone's uh, back is hurting more than an usual day, uh, it's pretty clear that you're at risk of losing your job. With Amazon scaling up its delivery service in recent years, there are now 700 warehouses like this one across the country. 
Most rely on contractors employed by other companies. Industry analysts say that allows Amazon to avoid liability for accidents. Even before this tragedy, Amazon has had a lot of issues with workers, their treatment of workers, and this is just another example. I mean, I, we hope that this litigation brings justice to the McEwen family and other families that have lost someone. But even at a larger, grander scale for decades to come, we presume Amazon's going to be in business uh, for many, many more decades. It's time to start treating workers appropriately. I think that's the number one message that the McEwens want to deliver.